Hey everyone, this is Miss Jamie from school. I hope everybody is safe and happy and healthy at home and enjoying all the quality time we can spend with our family and our loved ones. And I hope you guys are finding fun and creative ways to um, get through the day. And since we have a lot of time every day, Miss Amino and Miss Suiza, the wonderful gate directors at our school, thought that this would be a fun and creative way to bring our academies to you guys at home. So this is going to be our first online gate academy and it's going to be art history on the California painter Laurel Birch. And this really cute gradient cat here is what we're going to draw and make today. So first I'm going to show you a picture of Laurel Birch and you can google her with your parents help. Um, and this is what she looked like here. She's no longer living but she was born, raised and died in California. And this painting here called Fantastic Felines is what we're going to um, use as our inspiration for our cat today. And here is another one of her art pieces right here. And she was a artist in the 60s and 70s. She was born in 1945. And her art is really colorful and it's really fun. And she created art um, not only to make herself happy but to make others happy as well. So we're going to do this uh, tutorial style as if I was in the classroom with you guys. And so the things you'll need is a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, and a black uh, marker or something black that you can outline your cat with. doesn't have to be a marker or a sharpie, but it could be something black. And then you need um, things to color with. So I have color pencils here. The color pencils will be the best to create the smoothest um, gradient but if you don't have color pencils you can use crayons you can use markers you can use um, chalk chalk probably would be nice as well whatever you have around the house so you can pause the video at any time if you need to catch up or if you need to go get something um, so don't feel like you have to um, be in a rush okay so to start off with your pencil we're gonna divide our paper into four sections so we're just gonna draw one line down the middle and one line across and this is just so we can um, make our cat proportional so we don't have like a giant head or a tiny head okay and we're gonna start with the top left corner of our paper and in here we're gonna draw a open heart so we're gonna draw an upside down heart and we're not gonna close it and I'll show you what I mean okay so we're gonna draw as if we're drawing a heart just like this but we're not going to close the top to a point okay and this is going to be our basic cat face shape and try to make it so that it fills up the entire quadrant okay and after you have your upside down open-ended heart we're going to draw the ear points down and down and then we're going to connect it with the line for the forehead and the reason why we're doing this in pencil is so that we can erase the pencil lines later because you can't erase marker okay and so this is your basic cat face and now what we're gonna do is for the nose we're just gonna draw a rectangle straight down okay just like that all right and now we're gonna do the eyes so about halfway the midpoint of your rectangle we're just gonna draw a leaf shape or a football shape all the way to the ends of our face okay just like that and then for the bottom eyelids we're just gonna draw a happy face across and then for the upper eyelid we're actually gonna start at the point of our eyes and we're gonna draw like a rainbow out to the edge just like that okay and then we're gonna draw the actual eyeballs itself so we're just gonna do parenthesis parenthesis circle parenthesis parenthesis circle oh the clouds just came over okay now we're gonna draw our ear inner ear lines just like this and then we're gonna draw the cat's tongue okay now what I want you to do is I want you to take your eraser and I want you to erase just the top half of our little rectangle 
because we don't need that line there for the cat face. Okay, we're just going to erase the top line of our rectangle, just like that. Okay, so now we're going to do the body. So when a cat sits up, its back shoulder is kind of hunch, kind of like the hunchback, right? So we're going to actually start um, at the end point of our eye. So we're not going to do the body down like this. We're going to actually start at the um, point of our eye and we're going to draw a giant curve through these two quadrants and about a third of the way here is where we're going to stop, okay? So start at the eye and then we're going to just draw a giant curve all the way down to there, okay? Like a giant backward C. All right, and now for the paws, we're just going to draw a rounded W on the bottom. So start where you ended your body line and then just draw two rounded Ws, okay? And then from where you ended your W, we're just going to draw the line up to complete the body. Okay, so for the body, start at the eye, draw a curve all the way down. And then from there, draw a rounded W, and then bring your pencil line all the way up for the body. Okay, we're almost done. So for the tail, we're going to start again where you ended your body, and we're going to make a question mark shape. Okay, so maybe it's more helpful if you draw. So just draw a question mark and connect it to the body point there. Okay, so I did a question mark and I connected it to the body point I had right here, okay? To finish the tail, we're just going to start at the question mark point and go backwards and flick. Okay, so I didn't connect this tail line to the body. I just went back and flick, okay? So that's it. And now after, at this point, I want you to take your black tracing marker or pencil, um, crayon, whatever you have, and I want you to trace the cat lines only. Don't trace your um, paper dividing lines, only trace the cat lines, okay? And while I do that, I'll tell you guys some more interesting facts about Laurel Birch. So, um, Laurel Birch's mother was also an artist, but she wasn't a painter or a sculptor or anything. She was a fashion designer. And she actually was the designer for an actress named Peggy Lee. And if you ask your parents or um, if you ask your grandparents, they should know who she is. And so her mother was also an artist of a different kind. And another thing about Laurel Birch was that she actually had a medical condition called osteoporosis which makes your bones really weak and brittle. So she actually suffered over a hundred breaks and fractures of her bones in her lifetime. But that didn't prevent her from um, creating art or painting. And even though she had that physical limitation, she still tried her best to create art and was very good at it. So if you see here, I'm tracing all of my pencil lines with the black, I'm not tracing the dividing line, I'm just tracing only the cat's body, okay? So I'm almost done with that. And the good thing about the pencil is that if you don't like the lines that you drew, like I wanted a little bit of a fatter tail, I just, you know, used my pencil line as a guide, but I just went out, okay? So after you have your cat traced like this, Take your eraser and erase all the pencil lines um, that are there, okay? So, because Laurel Birch had osteoporosis, you know, uh, and she suffered a lot of bone breaks, you would think that maybe she would give up on painting or maybe give up on doing anything um, in general. But if you think about all of the artists that we've studied so far, right? Last time we dis we studied Wazili Kandinsky when we did the hearts, the painted hearts. Um, last year we did 
a paper collage. I don't know if you guys remember, we did a paper collage and that artist was Henry Matisse. And all of those artists actually had some sort of disease or physical um, limitation of some kind, right? Um, Henry Matisse, when he got older, couldn't even stand, so he had to um, have other people paint for him. And Vasily Kandinsky, he had um, synesthesia, if you remember, which meant, which means that he was able to hear the different sounds that colors make. Okay, and Laurel Birch, she had osteoporosis, but despite all of their limitations, they still were able to create art and still be creative. So right now, we're limited on our ability to go outside, but that doesn't mean that we can't have fun at home. We can do art and be creative and do things like that. Okay, so now I have my cat all traced out, right? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to pick the colors that we want um, to color our cat. And we're going to do it in a gradient style. So in art, gradient means just a gradual transition from one color to another. So if you see here, I start with pink and I gradually transition all the way to purple. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick six colors of the same um, shade. So if you, maybe six blues or six yellows or six greens. If you don't have six colors in front of you, you can't make six blues or six yellows, then just pick three and you can um, repeat the pattern um, from the head and the body. Okay, so for example, if I want to do green, I'm going to choose a light green, a medium green, and a dark green. And if I have more green options, because I have more colors here, I'll pick, I'll keep going darker and darker like this. Okay? Same thing with yellows or pinks and reds. And now I'm going to show you how to create a gradient. Okay? So I'm going to choose, I'll choose the green. So I'm going to start with my lightest green. Okay? And this is um, my test paper. So I'm just going to test it on here so I can show you. So I'm going to color my lightest green first. Just like this okay and then I'm going to take the next shade darker and I'm going to color underneath it okay and then I'm going to take the next shade and I'm going to color underneath that okay but what I notice here and I don't know if you guys notice is that my middle color is actually darker than my third color so I'm going to switch that okay so I'm going to start again I'm going to do my lightest color I'm going to do the medium green and I'm going to do my third darkest shade of green. Okay, So if you see here like this, this bottom one, the color transition is more smooth because it goes from light medium to dark rather than light dark to medium. Okay, So if you only have three colors, this is just fine and you can repeat this pattern on the head and the body. But if you have more, if you, could, if you have enough colors for six, then I would do this one, and this one, and then, you see here, I did another, I kept going with my gradient. And I don't actually have a green that's darker than this, so what I'm going to actually do is, I have a yellow, I have a yellow that has a lot of um, green in it, so I'm actually going to color this yellow on top because this yellow actually is kind of close to the green okay so to create a gradient you just pick colors of the same shade same color family remember last time we um, discussed hot and cold colors right hot colors are warm colors are red yellow orange cool colors are blue green purple you know in relation to that so we're gonna start uh, so just pick colors of the same color family, the same shade, and then just start from lightest to dark and um, transition it gradually, okay? Now, I'm going to show you if, for example, you're like, well, Miss Jamie, I kind of want to go from, um, let's say, red to green. Now, red and green, they're not part of the same color family, okay? Red is a warm color and green is a cool color. But what you can do is you can create put colors in the middle that transition from red to green, and I'll show you how to do that. 
So if you want to start with red, okay, the color of the red. The next color that I would put is orange because orange is red and yellow. So I would take an orange, okay, and I would color that next to it. So this is a nice gradual transition. After the orange, I would put a yellow or a golden. So this is yellow, but it's a yellow that has orange and yellow into it, okay? So I would pick this, because it's a little bit orangey, but it's also a little bit yellowy, okay? Red, orange, yellow. Some of you might notice a pattern. And then after this orangey yellow, I will put yellow. So just like that. Now I'm going to take that yellowy green that I had, that's yellow and green, and I'm going to color that down here. So you can tell that it's a very smooth, gradual transition, but I'm already at yellow from where I started red. And then I'm going to take the green that had yellow in it, and I'm going to color it there. Okay, and then that's one, two, three, four... One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna take the next screen down and transition it. And that's how you would go from two complementary or opposite colors like red and green, how you would transition it. You just have to pick the right colors in the middle to transition from the top to the bottom, okay? So um, here are some other samples of color gradients that I have done. This is my blues kind of crazy I know. So if you see here I went from uh, almost like a tealy blue but I went all the way down to navy okay and I have one here of browns okay I went from a kind of like a rusty orangey brown all the way down to black um, oh I have one here that goes from red to blue and I put purples as my transition so that's kind of how you create a gradient. So um, experiment with different colors, different shades. Maybe you want to pause the video here and kind of um, take a test paper and work out some colors so you can get uh, a nice gradient. And like I said, if you don't have six colors to work with, you can just do three because three is a little bit easier. And then you can just do the same pattern on the head and the body. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our pencil. Your cat should be all outlined and your pencil line should be erased. And we're gonna go back to our pencil and we're gonna put a design on the body and the tail. So Laurel Birch had a lot of geometric shapes and lines and patterns in her um, paintings. And in her painting, Fantastic Felines, each of the cats have a different type of pattern. Okay, so on my sample one here, I used um, diamond triangle shapes for the body, and I used stars for the tail. So pick any geometric shape, squares, uh, circles, ovals, um, any sort of geometric shape that you can color in. So a swirl would not be a great idea because you can't really color in a swirl, right? If you go like this, you can't really color in a swirl. Um, and don't do like polka dots. You can do circles, but don't do like polka dots because you can't really put, um, color in polka dots. If you want to do a um, line pattern, such as a zigzag, you have to create, make sure you make it double lined so that you can color the inside. So this is a zigzag. If you want to do a, just like a wavy line, make sure you make it uh, double line so you can color the inside but in general shapes like circle rectangle triangle in general the geometric shapes are the best I mean you can create just like I did maybe you can create a pattern within such as that but pick a geometric shape okay um, so take your pencil and draw the shape one shape for the body and one shape for the tail. Okay, so I'll just do circles. Just to keep it easy. And I want you to notice what I'm doing with my circles. If you can see here, I'm actually drawing my circles 
inside and outside of the body line. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when you create a pattern, okay, um, it looks better if you extend that pattern past your border so it looks like um, the cat would be spotted all over. Okay, if I only drew the circles inside within the body lines, like if I only drew the circles here without ex extending it, it would kind of look weird. Like if you look at a, maybe you have a dog or a cat or something, um, their markings go all across their body, right? I have a cat and she has gray markings on the front of her leg, but it also extends to the back of her shoulder. So that's kind of what I'm trying to um, show here. So I'm trying to show that even though the tail is here, right, even though the tail is here, um, the tail is covering this part of the spot. And that's why I'm using a pencil so that I can erase um, outside of the body lines. Okay, so I did a circles. I did circles for my body. Okay, and then I'm going to take my eraser and Erase whatever is inside the tail because we're going to do a different pattern for the tail. Okay. Alright. And then for the tail, I'm just going to do stripes. So just like I said earlier, if you're going to do a um, line pattern and not a shape, just make sure you create two lines so you can color the inside. Okay. Just like that. All right, take your eraser and erase any outside marks you did, any of um, the marks that are outside of the body. Okay, just like that. And then take your marker and trace whatever um, shape or pattern that you made. I'm going to trace my circle, like that. Okay. So Laura Birch, not only was she a painter, but she also made jewelry. And I don't know if I already said, but she painted on scraps of metal. So she would go to the junkyard and find scraps of metal. She would hammer them flat and then she would paint on them. So there are lots of creative and interesting ways that you can create art. It doesn't always just have to be painting or drawing on a piece of paper. Okay, so make sure you trace your tail shape as well, or tail pattern I would say. Okay, and then take your eraser once again and erase any of the pencil lines. I'm going to erase off the table because when I erase on the table, it shakes the camera. And it looks like I'm in the middle of an earthquake, but I'm not. Okay, so now we should have your cat and your patterns all outlined. Okay, and now we're going to color, okay, so let me see if I can make it so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So, okay, I think that's, I think I can put it like this. Okay, now, so to start coloring, what we're going to do is you're going to pick the lightest shade of the um, six or three colors that you chose. Okay, so I'm actually going to do a brown cat this time. So I'm going to start with, and I have six shades here. I'm going to start with my lightest brown and I'm going to start coloring the ears and right above the eyes. Okay, I'm going to color the ears and kind of right above the eyes where the eyes meet the nose, okay? And one of the ways to create a really smooth gradient is to color in one direction. 
If you guys remember when you guys were in kindergarten, your teachers were like, color in one direction, don't color side to side, and then color up and down. Because when you color in all different directions, instead of creating a smooth um, line, it's very chaotic, right? If you have younger siblings, like uh, babies, like toddlers or babies, and they color kind of crazy, like up and down and side to side and diagonal, and that looks kind of wild. So try to color in one direction. If you are using marker, one way to make it look smooth is just, I'll show you here, is to just color straight across and keep adding color the line where you left off. Marker is a little bit harder because you can see the marker lines, but instead of going like this, right, which kind of creates a lot of gap in space, if you color just straight across, you know, starting and stopping where you ended off, it creates more of a smooth looking picture. Okay, so now, so I did my lightest brown color, okay, and I colored my ears, and the tops of my eyes kind of like where it meets the nose okay now take your second shade and we're not going to start where the lightest color ends we're actually going to start a little bit above because we want the two colors to blend so we're going to start a little bit above i'm starting a little bit above where my light color is still and then i'm going to color it to right below the kitty's nose. I'm not coloring in the eyes at all. I'm just going to color from where I started my light color just all the way to about a little bit below the nose. Okay? And I'm coloring side to side one direction and sometimes it is hard to get the edges use an even amount of pressure don't like press hard in one area and then press lightly in the other just try to press evenly all the way across okay because you can tell uh, where you pressed harder and where you didn't and that also affects how smooth your um, colors will be okay so like that all right so you can see right here where my lightest color and my medium color meets, that's kind of the transition point. And the reason why I um, colored the medium color a little bit above is just so that it could have a nice blend. Okay? Just like that. Now, I'm gonna take my third color, okay? And just like I did before, I'm gonna take, start from where my medium color still is and I'm gonna blend down to the rest of my face or the face of the cat okay and one important thing to note when you're doing a gradient blend is like I said however hard you pressed on the other colors is how hard you should press on every color so if you did a very light stroke, then just do light strokes all around. If you did, um, like, if you press harder, then press hard on all the colors. Okay? And you could take the colors up into each other. The more the colors kind of overlap, it creates a smoother blend. Okay? I see here on mine, I kind of have a harsh line. You can definitely tell where the, this color stops and this color starts. So I'm going to take my middle color again. And I'm just going to try to blend it out a little bit more. So it's more smooth. So it looks like the colors are blending into each other. Okay, just like that. Now for the eyes and the eyelids, you can color the eyelids any color you want in the eyes. So for the eyelids, I think I'm going to do... Maybe, hmm, pink. Maybe I'll do um, just magenta color for the eyelids, just for the contrast. I'm gonna do the bottom. 
bottom, do the top. Laurel Birch's paintings are all very colorful, they're very vibrant. Um, she was a painter in the 60s and 70s, kind of during the hippie era, so during that time everything was really colorful and um, happy and fun, and so I think that inspired a lot of her paintings. So I'm going to do that to my eyes. Okay, I used a magenta, and for the actual um, eyeball, I'm going to actually use teal for the actual pupil, I guess, right? And the middle part is called the iris. I'm not sure. I'm sure one of you know. You guys are all so smart and know lots of things. So I'm just going to use teal. And I'm going to um, leave the whites of the eyes white and the very middle part of the eyes white as well. Okay. So my cat so far looks like this. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my body shades. So I did my light. I did my medium. I did my third. Okay. And since I have six colors, I'm going to start with the next color down. Okay, so one, two, three, four. And I'm just going to start with the body. So start with the body. And I'm going to color this all the way to about where this point of the tail is. Your curvature of the tail meets, okay? So I'm going to color around my circles. I'm trying to make sure that I'm coloring in one direction and that I'm not coloring in the circles. Okay. And you have to imagine, if your tail is in the way, you have to imagine where this line continues, right? So that you have an even spread. Okay, get around the edges. And I think, I'm sure all of you can maybe relate. Like when you get like a new box of crayons or a new box of color pencils and they're all arranged in kind of like color order, it kind of feels really like nice, right? Like, ah, oh, that feels so kind of like calming and soothing. And I think that's what this gradient, um, method kind of does. It kind of makes you feel calm and relaxed. Okay, so I did that. I colored my body with my fourth brown shade. Okay, and now I'm going to take my next dark shade, okay, and I'm going to continue down about here. So imagine your cat's body if you divide it into thirds. And I'm gonna color the middle part. And just like before, I'm actually starting where I where the lighter shade is so that it creates kind of like an overlap. So that it creates like a nice blend. Okay. And as you're doing this, think about what color you might want to color your um shapes or your pattern, think about a color that will pop against what you've used. So for my purple cat, my pink and purple cat, I used green as the colors for my diamonds. If you're coloring a yellow shaded cat, maybe you can use red or blue, a color that's really contrasting. Because like I said, Laurel Birch used a lot of really bright colors and patterns and um, if you see her paintings, you can really see the contrast between all the colors. You can even experiment with like um, gold or silver, um, black, anything that's going to be fun and colorful. All right. Coloring is hard work here. All right, so we did this, and I'm just blending the two colors together. Okay, and then my last color is gonna be for the bottom. 
And my last color actually is black because my dark brown is very close to black. So I decided to transition it to black. When you see the dark brown color that I used by itself, you can say you can tell, oh yeah, that's dark brown. But when I put black up next to it, it looks almost the same. I think that's the great thing about colors is that depending on what you put the color next to, it can shift into a different shade or a different hue. And that's, I think, really fun. Okay. So I did that. And I'm just making sure my edges are all colored. Okay. So here's my cat. Okay. You can kind of see. Here we go. That I started from the lightest brown shade and I transitioned all the way down to black. Okay. Now for my circles, I think I'm going to use the same pink shade that I used for the eyes just to match. Um, but you can use any color you like to color yours. Okay. So what have you guys been doing while we've been at home? I saw many of you guys did... Uh, are participating in Spirit Week, right? Yesterday was Technology Tuesday and I saw a lot of really cute kitchen robots. And on Monday it was, what was Monday? Oh, Pet, Pet Day. That was fun because even a lot of the teachers, we got to see their pets at home. And ooh, today is What's for Lunch Wednesday. Did you guys already eat lunch? It's kind of past lunchtime, but All right, so I'm almost done here coloring my cat circles. For the tail, we're just gonna color the tail one color. And I'm gonna use the lightest shade that I used for my tail just because I used such dark colors on the body I wanted to um, show up. So for the tail, pick, go back to the lightest color you chose in the beginning. Mine would be like this um, tan color. And I'm going to color the tail this tan color. I'm not going to color my stripes yet because I'm going to color that a different color. So I'm going to color my tail itself the light tan. So whatever um, part of the tail that you have around your pattern or shape or design, color it the lightest shade. All the way down to the bottom. Perfect. Now for my stripes, I think I'm gonna do green. So I'm gonna take just like this kind of apple green color. It's called lime green actually. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the lime green and I'm gonna just color my stripes in just like that. Oh, you know what we didn't put on the cat? I just, just realized we didn't put whiskers. So take, luckily that's easy. So take your marker or um, whatever you use to outline and just draw three whiskers. Boop. That's a cat without whiskers, right? Did you know one time my cat burned its whiskers off because she jumped on the stove, she jumped on the counter and the stove was on and she for some reason thought it was a good idea to go close to the fire and so she burned but they grew back okay so then I'm just coloring the tongue and that's it so your drawing should look probably even better than mine um, and what I did with my original one is I just cut out you know I took scissors and I just cut out the um, cat and I just glued it onto a colorful paper that matches um, my shapes but you don't have to do that you can leave it just as is I'm sure it'll, it looks fabulous and um, or you can do cut it out and glue it here okay well I hope you guys enjoyed this skate Academy uh, it's the first one that we've ever done so sorry if it was a little bit you know like 
hard to understand or hard to follow. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys are having、um, a fun time at home. Enjoy、uh, spending time with your family, and、um, send Mrs. Swayze or Miss Amino your cat drawings if you end up doing one. Okay, all right. Well, I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.